Here's a, uh, here's a funny guy. Uh, Jeff uh, Foxworthy has been with us before. He's got a uh, Showtime special running currently. It's going to be on again this Saturday night. And uh, Jeff's appearing at the Improv in Brea, California this weekend at the Punchline in Greenville, South Carolina, November 19th through the 23rd. Would you welcome Jeff Foxworthy? Jeff. <laughs> Well, this kind of caps off the perfect day being back here today. I had the greatest day today. The uh, the sun was shining. The birds were singing. The Victoria's Secret catalog came in the mail. <laughs> A free home-delivered catalog of women in their underwear. God bless America right here. I knew it was coming, too, because the mail was about three hours late, you know. And, uh, <laughs> have you seen this thing? Some of this stuff is so skimpy, Victoria doesn't have a whole lot of secrets left. <laughs> you give a couple of guys one of these catalogs, we're fascinated. Oh, Mike, come here, look at this. That has got to hurt like hell right there. <laughs> like wearing a big string. Seems like every time you bowl, just cut you right in two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I'd much rather look at the catalog at home than to go into the store. I mean, because if you're a guy, you do feel like a pervert when you're in the Victoria's Secret store. You, fe you feel like the girls behind the counter have the sex offender catalog and they're just trying to match your picture up. Sally, look at the guy with the panties on his head. That is the same guy. I learned something in the new catalog, too. Victoria's Secret makes men's underwear now. See, I didn't know that. Well, see, my only thought is, please, dear God, keep it simple. <laughs> Nothing fancy, nothing like those teddies, that combination bottom and top. Can you see men dealing with this? Look, Frank, I'm not saying it ain't pretty, all right? I just wouldn't wear it fishing if I was you. I tried that last month, spent the whole day just cast and tugged. Cast and tugged. My wife is as pretty as anybody in the catalog. Of course, now, she doesn't think so. You know, beautiful girl, you hear her describe herself, it sounds like bearded goat woman from hell. If she looked like that, I'd chain her up in the garage, start three bucks for people to look at her. Now, stand back. This is scary stuff. I'm not kidding. That is my wife. Now, give me the money. See, but she's smarter than I am because she takes so long to get ready, but no matter how late she's running, she knows how to keep me running just as late. This is her best trick right here. When she's putting on this eye stuff, I have no idea what this is, but look. <laughs> You're not wearing that, are you? No, I ain't wearing this. Just what I'm wearing while you're getting ready. Well, see, being a man, we have no idea what's wrong with it. We'll try on everything we can find. What about this, baby? A sweater and a bathing suit. What do you think about that? <laughs> Hold on, I got more. I'll be back. <laughs> and you got to watch out, too, guys, because women will get rid of your clothes when you're not looking. <laughs> my wife just gave my favorite shirt to the Salvation Army because she said it was out of style, which is ridiculous because I was watching Bewitched last week and Larry Tate had on one just like that. As little as men know about fashion, girls, you still ask our opinion about stuff. <laughs> we'll be ready to walk out the door. My wife say something like, honey, which earrings look better with this, the white ones or the black ones? I'm like, oh boy, I got a 50-50 shot at this. <laughs> say the white ones. The white ones, now I've got to change this blouse. <laughs> just don't care as much. Yeah, you never see a guy picking up his buddy to go fishing at five o'clock in the morning going, dang, Bill, you ain't gonna wear that shirt with them shoes, are you? It's after Labor Day for crying out loud. We don't do that. See, and I do believe the sexes are equal. I just don't think they'll ever be the same. I mean, like, great example. Say a guy gets a phone call from a friend of his. He hasn't talked to him in a while. A man will answer the phone and say something like, Hello? Wally, you ugly old bald-headed pervert. Where are you, idiot? But you never see women go, Hello? Janet, you fat pig. <laughs> And 
talking about friends, and women know this. Men are like little kids. You can't let us out to play with our friends because we never come back when we're supposed to. <laughs> oh, you get two or more men together, we can't tell time anymore. <laughs> Baby, we'll be back by 5.30, quarter till 6 at the latest. And then we come rolling in like February. <laughs> friends are going to get us in trouble. That's why they're our friends. I mean, you ask a female to describe a friend, you get an answer like, oh, she's the best. You need to talk to somebody. She is always there. You ask a guy to describe a friend, you're going to get something like, oh, he's a great friend. He'll come get you out of jail at three o'clock in the morning. Well, it's not really true, because if he was a great friend, his butt would be in jail with you. Sitting on a cot, smoking a cigarette, going, she didn't look like no cop, did she? Yeah. Uh, somebody brought me this this book down uh, in my office oh, earlier today. I was going through this. You're from where originally? From Atlanta, Georgia. From down, from the south. Yeah. Thank you. And, you. and you refer to people down there as rednecks. Well, I, well not so much in a derogatory sense, almost affectionately. Sometimes. Growing up, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I thought we had exclusive rights to rednecks, yeah. but uh, I found traveling the country, they're they're everywhere, which is. Uh, <laughs> Which is how the books came about, because yeah. a lot of people just didn't know if they were a redneck. Says you might be a redneck if. You want to do anything? Hey, well, if just... uh, you might be a redneck if uh, your wife's hairdo has ever been destroyed by a ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my favorite out of that book, if your family tree does not fork. <laughs> Somebody. I don't know. This was uh, this was funny to me. You might be a redneck if your lifetime goal is to own your own firework stand. Yeah. That's a... Well, what happened? People, there were 150 in this book. People yeah. flooded me with them, and so uh, there's a new book out this week. It's called Red Ain't Dead: 150 More Ways to Tell. And right. if you refer to the fifth grade as my senior year. <laughs> Isn't there one in there if the uh, t t ninth grade has a daycare center or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if going to the bathroom in the middle of the night involves shoes and a flashlight. <laughs> That's pretty fun. So Atlanta, you grew up in Atlanta. Grew up in Atlanta. Uh, I don't live there now. We moved to L.A. a few years yeah. ago, which I, I never thought I would leave the South. But yeah. uh, you know, started doing TV and getting on the air. And then my kinfolk said, Jeff, move away from there. <laughs> Sorry. You know, people who have not spent any time in the South, it is kind of a remarkable transition. I was talking about the service earlier. I went from Nebraska to Mississippi at a, neighbor, yeah. at, at, a, in a at a military base there. And it was like going into Mars all of a sudden. I could not understand the people, literally. Yeah. This deep, guy. deep... Southern talk. And, uh, they want me to lose my accent. My acting teacher does now, which I refuse to do oh, it, but she's on. right. She says because uh, Southerners never get to play anybody intelligent, you know. <laughs> well, he's never, a, never a lawyer. We're, all, we're the guy in the overalls tying the boat up to the dock going, y'all gonna be all day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man's right. Right. Ding, 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 ding. We'll be right back. See where you are. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, happy fatherhood. His wife is expecting a baby today. Today, Good yeah. Luck. Okay. Patrick, thanks for being here. Patrick's show is called Step by Step, of course. And uh, George Siegel will be here tomorrow. Pen uh, Penelope. Penelope. Penelope Ann Miller. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And comedian <laughs> Drew Carey. Good night. I'm humbled by that applause.